top 10 best things to do in New Orleans. You've done Bourbon Street and probably forgotten what happened. You've spent an entire day trying to read everything in the World War II Museum. You've gone on a plantation tour, had beignets in the French market, and visited the swamp. You know there is more, and you want more. After 15 years in New Orleans, I still love to play tourists when I have free time. I almost always find new things to explore, but I have my favorites I constantly revisit. Here are my top 10 favorite things to do when I play tourist at home. Number 10, frozen Irish coffee or your favorite daiquiri or beverage of choice in a go cup and a visit to the moonwalk. Go to your favorite haunt and get your favorite drink and then go watch the sunset or rise on the riverfront while you enjoy it. The view is majestic and the ships that traverse the river are incredible. It's easy to understand why the Port of New Orleans is so important when you see the traffic on the river and how many different companies and individuals rely on it for their income. Number 9. Audubon Park and the Tree of Life The Entien de Bore Oak, also known as the Tree of Life, is thought to be one of the oldest trees in New Orleans. It was last measured at 35 feet in circumference in 2010. It was 23 feet when it was added to the Live Oak Society in 1934. Trees that are larger than 30 feet in circumference are thought to be more than 300 years old. This tree was on the Dobore plantation during colonial times. Etienne Dobore was the first American mayor of New Orleans. It was also on his plantation that sugar was granulated on a large scale, making it a cash crop for New Orleans. Number eight, a cemetery tour. The cemeteries in New Orleans are definitely an odd favorite of mine. I like wandering around St. Louis number three to see who I can find and what I can learn. Of course, I'm partial to the tour I created, linked in the description, but there are guided tours available, including by yours truly. Send me a message for more information. Number seven, Esplanade Avenue. The Grand Avenue of the Creoles, Esplanade Avenue was the original tree-lined street mansions in the city. It is also where many wealthy free people of color had homes. There is a free app you can download called the New Orleans Slave Trade Marker Tour and Audio Guide, which provides more information about slavery in New Orleans and how ingrained into daily life it was. On Esplanade, you can find an interactive augmented reality display that is part of the tour. Number six, the Free People of Color Museum. On Esplanade Avenue in a historic mansion, you can find the Musée de FPC. The guided tour provides a glimpse into the history and culture of free people of color who lived in New Orleans before the Civil War. This is honestly in the top three best tours I've experienced at any museum, and I highly recommend learning more about this overlooked history. Number five, the Garden District. First subdivided as a separate city called Lafayette in 1833, the Garden District is filled with gorgeous historic homes, some of which are homes to celebrities and lush gardens. The Rink is a shopping center first built in 1884 for the world's cotton centennial as the world's largest skating rink. Number four, City Park. From Cootery Forest and Scout Island to the Sculpture Garden in the New Orleans Museum of Art, City Park is truly a special part of New Orleans. Cootery Forest boasts the highest point in the city, the man-made Laborde Mountain, with a special art treat for visitors who make it to the 42 feet high crest. Scout Highland is home to many ancient live oak trees and other native swamp foliage. The Sculpture Garden is a free outdoor monument to creativity with several paths displaying huge assortment of sculptures with a water feature and your visit with beignets at the casino building. Number three, St. Louis Cathedral and the center of old New Orleans. You've probably wandered around Jackson Square, but have you ever wandered into the cathedral? Inside is a cool reprieve filled with incredible art and architecture. The oldest artifact, the baptistry, is located in the St. Francis Chapel to the right of the altar. In the old baptistry in the back of the church is a chapel dedicated to the venerable Henrietta de Lille, who will be the first African-American saint once she is canonized. Number two, the historic New Orleans collection. 
in a wonderful historic building on Royal Street, the courtyard of which has served as the subject of countless artists. The Historic New Orleans Collection is a free museum housing wonderful artifacts from Louisiana and New Orleans history. Number one, Spanish Fort. My most favorite thing to do and place to bring friends who visit New Orleans is the old Spanish Fort located on the lakefront where Bayou St. John meets the lake. This historic area has ruins of the old colonial fort that was here to protect the city from this shortcut revealed to the French by the Native Americans. It was also a resort town at one point with a hotel and it was the site of the St. John's Eve rituals described in the newspapers during the 19th century. I love enjoying this piece of often forgotten history and sharing it with others. That's my top 10 for December 2023. Tell me, what are your top 10 favorite things to do in New Orleans? <laughs>